Yeah, that'll be all right. One Victorian or them. Four swords. Got them in sight. Assorted cane furniture. Hmm. Yeah, cleaned up. That'll be all right. <laughs> Got some more damp somewhere. Yeah, one Indian carpet in my bedroom. <laughs> one stuffed Indian tiger. That's going to be difficult. <laughs> oh, God, blimey, curry again. How'd you know? I could smell you coming up the road. <laughs> well, you like curry. I oh, know I did. We've had it five times already, and it's still only Thursday. We even had it for breakfast once. Hey, look at me, I'm going brown. <laughs> Good thing this weather, mate, keeps you warm. Hey, look at that lot. Only nine and six. I don't know how he does it. Well, I do, mate. When did you last see a cat round here? <laughs> don't be disgusting. If you don't eat it, I'll eat it. I'll cook you something else. No, thank you. I don't want any more of your Jimmy Young cock-ups. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with that lot? If you must know, I'm getting some props together for the next production at the Civic Hall. Oh, God. Are they on the air roll again? It's good publicity. We catch the credit in the programme. Costumes and Properties by Steptoe and Sub. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know why you bother. People don't want to see that rubbish. The last one you brought me to. <laughs> Richard the 111th. Richard the Third, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible! Shakespeare? Terrible. It was the way they did it, mate. Ten people in the house, including you and me. What a disaster. Curtain goes up, old matey hobbles on. Now is the winter of our discontent, and his ump falls off. <laughs> <laughs> they're amateurs, Harold. Well, of course they're amateurs. I mean, that's what makes it also worthwhile. As a matter of fact, they're developing into a very good little company, and very competent. And now, for one, I'm proud to be associated with them. Cobblers! <laughs> All you're interested in is knocking off the leading lady. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with it. I, I admit, I do admire Madeleine Bannerman very much. But purely on an artistic level. What do they want all this stuff for? What load of old rubbish are they doing this week? We are performing a new play, especially written for us, by our producer, Rupert Fafanes Muir. <laughs> and we are performing it at the Civic Hall next week. We? Yes, we. Our minute. <laughs> you? On the stage? And why not? Ha! <laughs> 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 oh, stop me, don't make me laugh. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I fail to see anything amusing. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> Lovely, darling. I saw your Hamlet, darling. Up yours, darling, and kiss me <laughs> so, darling. It's not like that at all. Oh, of course it is, actors. They're all poofs. <laughs> all that makeup. Love it, they do. Love it. I don't think I care to continue this discussion, Pratt. Excuse me. What are you going to call yourself? Lawrence O'Toole? <laughs> Oh, don't be silly, Harold. You can't act. It takes years. You have to go to school. Not necessarily. Lots of actors have started in rep. That's the finest training you can have. I mean, take our Richard III. He never went to drama school. He's an income tax collector. <laughs> Rupert says that uh, I, I, I'm a natural. <laughs> He's very impressed with my audition. What did you give him? Uh, Hamlet, Shylock, Henry V. No, uh, uh, it was all sort of thrust upon me. I, I didn't have uh, time to kind of learn anything. I was uh, scene shifting at the time, and a leading man dropped out, and uh, it was transferred to another bus depot. <laughs> um, and, uh, I was there, so I just got up and did it. What? So, Marlon Brando. The taxi scene from On the Waterfront. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, Charlie, Charlie. Oh, no, Charlie. 
I'm your brother, Charlie. I, I could have... I was world-class, Charlie. I, I, I could have been a contender, Charlie. I did for you, Charlie. I, I took a dive for you, Charlie. Oh, Charlie, 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 Charlie. <laughs> well, you know how it goes. And I gave you the job. Yes. Well, stuff my old boots. <laughs> but I thought I was very good. Rupert says I've got potential, and he's been around. He's a professional. I've seen his press clippings. Alden, Bradford and Barnsley. <laughs> well, if he's that good an actor, why isn't he in the West End? Oh, well, he had to give up acting cos it made him very ill. Uh, he left him with a weak bladder and he can't stay on stage for long periods. <laughs> show we're going to get here. Mm, that's typical of you, isn't it? You never give anybody any credit for trying. We would get right up your nose if I was to become a star, wouldn't it? You'd like to see me get out of here, wouldn't you? Hey? See me get on and get to the top. Yeah, you know, I've been making films all over the world. Hollywood, Madrid and Rome. Acting up against all that international crumpet. <laughs> With Raquel Welsh, Werner Lisa, and all the rest of them. Yeah. Irene Handel's more your mark. <laughs> I should be very proud to be up against Miss Irene Handel. Because <laughs> don't you make no mistake. It could happen. No, I've got, I got a feeling, Dan. This, this is what I've been waiting for. I mean, I know that this could happen. You see, the, the, the one job where, where, where education don't matter. You, you don't need A-levels to become an actor. I mean, for, for years I've been stuck here, not knowing which way to go and how to uh, express myself. I never thought about acting. Well, I mean, it happens for other people. Why not me? I'm not a bad-looking fella. <laughs> and if Hollywood's got hold of me, they'd, they'd do me teeth and me nose and pin me ears back. <laughs> I could look as good as any of them. Yeah. So could King Kong if they did that to him. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming, Harold. It don't happen to blokes like you. It does! Miss Sean Connery, he was a lorry driver. Uh, he's the same age as I am. So I've got more hair than he has. <laughs> now, I didn't expect any help from you. But you'd be the first on board my yacht when it happens, won't you, eh? I've got news for you. You're barred. <laughs> the minute I see you walking up the gangplank, I shall say to the captain, full steam ahead, and try and get him with the propellers. <laughs> the only yacht you'll ever have is the plastic one you have in your bath. Now, I shall say. Now, if you wouldn't mind serving the dinner, I've got a lot to do. The entire cast is meeting here at 8 o'clock. Hey? For the first reading of a new play by Rupert Fafane's Muir, the drama of the Northwest Frontier, entitled... Up your Kyber. Up your <laughs> Entitled Guilt. The White Man's Burden. And introducing ba -ba 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 -ba, Howell Steptoe as Lieutenant Carstairs, VC and Bar. The first battalion of the Royal Indian Rifles. In a Polish cavalry uniform. <laughs> well, died and all, so that won't notice the difference. Yeah, we're round here, mate. There'll be more turbans in the audience than on the stage. <laughs> what do you want to hear us round here for? Because the karate club is using the hall tonight. Now, come on, hurry up. There you are, get that down, you. It's chicken madras and, and mutton vindaloo. <laughs> Might help you get into character. Sounding like Louis Armstrong. <laughs> 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 Have you bought two 
shot already. Haven't you got... Oh, God! Haven't you gone out yet? To be you in a minute. All right. Here's ten bob. Go to the pictures. I've seen it. I can't see it again, then. I don't want to. Look, Dad, to be here. Look, please, Dad, I don't ask you for much. Please go out. It's too cold. Well, go to bed, then. It's too early. <laughs> what? I'm warning you. <laughs> this is very important to me. One word out of place, and the next item on the menu will be curried ghoulies. <laughs> Oh, you found it all right. Do, do come in. Now, come on in, darlings. <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, be a darling, darling, and take my coat, darling. Yes, darling. Now, come on in, darling. There's a good girl. <laughs> now, I, I don't think you know everyone. Uh, this is, this is Nemily Wagstaff, our new leading lady. Well, how'd you do? Hello. I've heard so much about you. Really? All, all good, I hope. <laughs> well, what happened uh, to Miss Bannerman? Ah, uh, yes, what indeed. <laughs> oh, darling, what uh, well, no, 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 let, 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 let me tell this. Um, uh, you know she was married, don't you? No, I did not. Uh, yes, yes, she was, she was married to Norman, who works the lights. Uh, well, it was all a bit umpty, and we, we knew that something was going to happen. Anyway, you remember Jack, who played um, Jim in John Loves Jack? <laughs> well, he was married to Janice, who played his mother. Anyway, it, it seems that Jack came back last night, packed his bags and scarpered. <laughs> There's an empty desk in the gas board showrooms today. <laughs> he went just like that. Oh, scarpered with the Bannerman. I think they've gone up and set up in production on their own. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're, we're terribly lucky to have got hold of Nem Nemony, who's, who's got tremendous experience. Really? Oh, yes, a right little pro, aren't you, darling? <laughs> I should look forward to playing opposite you, Harold. I don't know if I don't let you down. I'm very inexperienced. I'm sure not in everything. <laughs> oh, I say. What an absolutely super set. Straight out of love on the dough. This is our home. Oh, I didn't mean to be rude. May I introduce my father? Father, this is Sir Rupert for Fainsmuir, our producer. How do you do? Delighted. I'm sorry to hear about your illness. If you get caught short, the bog's outside. <laughs> nothing, nothing alcoholic, then. You've got an awful lot to get on with. Well, how about some cocoa? Cocoa would be there. Soup, yeah. soup. Yes. Go and make some cocoa. Now, I want to watch. Go and make some cocoa. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for the delay. Yes, well, come on now, let's let's get started. Now you've you've got your words, haven't you? Right. Um, I've uh, managed to gather some uh, props together, and I'm sure you'll be pleased with them. Uh, got some costumes as well. Lovely, lovely. And I must say that I've read the play, and I think it's quite magnificent. Thank you, dear boy. Uh, I do hope that your confidence in me will not be misplaced. <laughs> I hope I don't make a bolt. I'm a cut up. <laughs> I, I, I hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> Dear boy, I've, I've never been wrong yet. And anyway, I, I, I love the challenge of presenting a new face to my public. Now, the, the, the play is set. The play is set in a beleaguered fort on the Indian frontier uh, during the Afghan rising. Now, a punitive expedition by the British has failed and they are now surrounded by 50,000 savage tribesmen, whom, of course, we don't see. <laughs> and now, the, the, the dramatist person I... Pardon? The cast are as follows. The officer commanding the fort, that's uh, Sir Langham uh, Willoughby, that, that's, that's you, uh, Jeremy, and his wife, Lady Cecilia, that's Deirdre, and their beautiful daughter, Nemony, uh, that's, that's you, Nemony, she is Ariadne, and her fiancé is Lieutenant Carstairs, that's, that's you, Harold. Now, also in the fort are Gunga Din, that's Manville blacking up again, I'm afraid, ducky, <laughs> and the Mad Muller, which of course is you, Timmy. 
Uh, Rupert, darling, look, I don't want to knock it at this stage, but don't you think the plot is just a teensy-weensy bit old-fashioned? For 1972, I mean. Uh, uh, I, I thought you'd read the play, darling. Oh, I have, darling. Well, then surely you, you must see that that is deliberate. I mean, the whole thing is an analogy between the British in India and the Americans in Vietnam. Oh! <laughs> yes, well, that is the first thing what struck me. I mean, that's why I liked it so much. It has a profound social message, uh, I think. Fuzzle. Thank you, Harold. Thank God for an intelligent actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've probably had more time to study it than my fellow artiste. Now, the, the only other character in the play is uh, the, 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 the government envoy. That is the Right Honourable Lord Carruthers QC. Uh, who has been specially sent out by uh, Queen Victoria to negotiate with the Mad Muller. Uh, now, unfortunately, we, we've got a bit of a problem there. Oh, what's that, then? Uh, Reg hasn't turned up. Oh, God. Oh. No. He had all his teeth taken out this morning, and he won't get his new set in until after our opening night. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a very difficult part to cast, Lord Carruthers. I mean, he's, he's a man in his 70s, um, got great military bearing, a very distinguished career behind him, sort of patrician-like face. Small, slight of stature, of course. Come, and it... get <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> Say that again. Say what again? What you just said. Come and get it. It's remarkable. <laughs> Such resonance. Walk over to that door. <laughs> now, turn round. <laughs> now, come down here. Down, down here, down here, down here. That's... It's amazing. Incredible. Now! Pardon? <laughs> I'm not having a minute. <laughs> he is perfect. I mean, just look at that face. It's absolutely perfect. He is the Right Honourable Lord Carruthers to a team. That is my dad and he's an ignorant old get. If <laughs> he's in it, believe me, he's going to ruin it. No, I don't think so. Have you ever been on the stage before? No. Yes. When? 1418 war. Two concerts. <laughs> of course, you've done everything, haven't you? I mean, we needed a brain surgeon. You'd better first up. Get the cocoa on. Look, Rupert, could I have a word with you, please, uh, in, in private? Yes, certainly. Hmm. Oh, so, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't you soddle. <laughs> Honestly, he's, he's, got, he's going to make a mess of it. I mean, he, he can't play a lord with a voice like that. But he talks like you. Oh, yes, but I, I mean, I'm like Michael Caine. I mean, I can put it on, like he did in Zulu. <laughs> Perhaps your father can as well. I can't. He just calls us cow cakes. <laughs> Mr Steptoe, can you, can you speak with an upper-class accent? You mean, uh, something like this, old boy? <laughs> you see, it's perfect. He's not perfect, he's rotten. Of course, uh, if you prefer it a little more Sandhurst, I knew one fellow once with an extraordinary accent. <laughs> all like this. Shut up! <laughs> well, he, he won't be able to keep it up because, because we, he, he's a right gold blind man. Well, I think we'll take a chance, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, Steptoe. Yes. Would, would, you, would you care to play Lord Carruthers? Oh, I'll give it a go. Oh, Might be a giggle. <laughs> I think you'll find the party's mark for you. Well, I'm warning you. Hey, he's going to make a mess of it. It's on your own heads. <laughs> All right. Now we'll go from the top. Now, now, when the play begins, it is dusk. There's, there's been a lull in the fighting. All is quiet. Now, when the curtain rises, we discover Lieutenant Carstairs on the veranda with Ariadne in his arms. Over here. Right. Go. <laughs> Up there. Yeah. It's unbelievably quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they will attack before morning? No. <laughs> You're very taciturn, aren't you? Yeah. Johnny, you've got a big part, haven't you? <laughs> you see, he's not professional. Now, come along, please. No temperaments now. Come on, keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> What chance do you think we have, darling? Uh, well, one chance in a million. If, uh, if I can slip away tonight, and if I can get to Delhi in the morning, 
Ding dong, the bells begin to chime. Oh, yeah. Mr. Steptoe, now, now, really, you're you're not giving your son a chance. Now, now, please, come on, let's let's take it seriously. All right, carry on, Harold. You're very good. <laughs> your speech, Lemony. Do you think we will get out of this alive? He won't if you don't turn it in. <laughs> please. <laughs> so, your your father, and 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 the. Oh, sorry, and the general is in the study now, uh, discussing the terms they will present to the Mad Muller. Don't you mean the terms the Mad Muller will present to us? Ha, 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 ha. I, I, I knew it was foolish to try to deceive a soldier's daughter, but believe me, Harriet, me, those fiends will not take you alive. I have saved two bullets for us <laughs> and um, that's why we will always be together. My darling. Right, now the door bursts open and in strides Lord Carruthers and the General. Now, now Lord Carruthers is very, very angry. All right, go. I won't bother about the action yet. I'll work on that later. Fine, yes, yes. I am not satisfied, Willoughby. Her Majesty's government has been seriously misled. <laughs> <laughs> misled? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Misled. But needles to say. Needless! I told you he's going to spoil it. It's, 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 it's all right. It's, it's, it's all right. Go, go on, go on. Needless to say, I have a plan. I bring a sausage from a magic. Message! <laughs> Put your bleeding glasses on! Oh, no, Rupert. <laughs> Could, couldn't we rewrite it? I mean, couldn't we have him stand at the French windows and get killed by a stray bullet? <laughs> no, 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 no. Please, carry on. What is the sausage? <laughs> the message of Brute. It is a message from Her Majesty the Queen to the Alf Garnet Chief. The Afghan chief. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the Afghan chief. It is a message of peace and goodwill between our two peoples, and as a gesture of friendship, she has instructed me to present to the mad mullah a string of Peloponies. <laughs> Polo ponies! Well, that's not my fault. The bleeding type and she ran the words into each other. It's the same in my script. I've got to say it. And I knew that they were Pol Polo ponies. <laughs> We should hardly give him a string of Peloponnes now, would she? <laughs> well, I don't know what Afghans have for breakfast. <laughs> you can't read, you can't think, and you can't act. And this whole production's going to be a fiasco! No, 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 please, come on, darlings, it's early days, early days. Well, it's just a reason. Here. It is in ruins before it's even started. <laughs> you great book! <laughs> <laughs> dramatic critic from the East Acton Gazette. Oh, do come in. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I've got one next door. Your father sent me in to see if you'd uh, join in with the celebrations. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a bit of an headache. 
It's, it's a very demanding part. I'm <laughs> quite exhausted. Yes, yes, come on. Enjoyed the show very much. Oh, there's just one thing you said in the third act that confused me. What, what exactly is a polopony? <laughs> <laughs> just a slip of the tongue. It was a mistake. That is all. Oh, I see. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> No, I'm a wagon palm man. And that's all I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> 